I was wondering, how did you two get involved with One Piece? I was brought on as the ADR director for Funimation's dub, like at the at the moment when they started working on it. So I've been involved with it in some capacity or another since the very beginning of it. I helped through the audition process of uh, selecting the Straw Hats and have kind of either been the ADR director myself personally or worked with a group of people that I kind of oversaw in one capacity or another as we've helped to continue the show. So I've been working on it since 2000, late 2007, early 2008, somewhere in there. It's been a hot minute, so I can't remember the exact start time. Yeah, 2007, 2000, yeah. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> at the time, I was one of the head writers at Funimation, so I was brought on as uh, the head writer. I think there were two of us at the time, maybe working on it, because it was such a big property, but we came in working on season three. So the first thing I had to do is go back and watch all the first two seasons to know where we were starting. And so I did all of that. And then starting at season three as a writer, working with a team of writers on that for a few seasons. And then, you know, like any of the actors auditioned for the role and um, got Sanji I auditioned, I think for Zorro, cause I felt like that was more in my wheelhouse and I was wrong. <laughs> Speaking of Sanji, you've voiced some serious characters like Trunks. Is there anything that you particularly enjoy about voicing Sanji, who is serious when he's fighting, but he's also more of a wannabe ladies man? Well, um, you know, growing up as a wannabe ladies man and failing miserably at it, I identified with the character in that regard. Um, playing Sanji has been, is I always remember like, I guess Mike, it was like the first day that you were directing me on it and mike told me once we figured out he had a good idea of what he thought the voice would be and he told me it's my morning voice right so it's the when i wake up in the morning when i work on one piece still to this day uh i try to have my sessions for one piece as early in the day as possible and i don't really warm up you know i i just wake up and go to work and the, and it's easy to find the voice that way. Yeah, it's because a little, little, what's that? It, it's a little deeper and has that texture in it. Like, hello, man, it's early in the morning. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, I was wondering, you voice Buggy. Can you speak a bit about his journey from the beginning to his most recent appearance for you? Because he was the first Devil Fruit villain that Luffy faced. So it's been a while. It yeah, it has been a while. Um, it's interesting to watch and experience Buggy's journey both on screen and through, you know, voicing the character in English. Because um, as he's introduced, you find out so much so quick, like there's this, this clown pirate and his body can come apart and come back together. And he, he's got this insane laugh and he's got, you know, he's particular about his nose. Like there's all sorts of these quirks that get introduced in the first few moments of seeing him. And uh, then you find out more and more about him, that he's got this really elaborate past that goes all the way back to being involved with, with Gold Roger and all, all sorts of stuff where you're like, what? This guy was there through all of that stuff? Um, so it's neat to just like keep peeling back the layers of, uh, of uh, how like essential just his existence is to the story as far as like he's been involved with so many different things that have had a huge impact on how everything turns out. So like, it, you know, I guess part of the, reaction or whatever would be from the audience is like wait you mean this guy you know like there's a whole bunch of that that is it continues on where there's a whole bunch of you mean this guy and it's like wow he just he's been involved with so many things considering that dragon ball as a franchise is about to hit its 40th anniversary in a couple of years and one piece is about to hit its 25th and it just had so many milestones with the thousandth episode coming up for you all eventually the hundredth volume the thousandth chapter how does it feel to be a part of a legacy spanning two of the most successful long-term franchises for anime and manga? If, when you put it like that, it's overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't think of that. I just, you know, I, I, I handle things in these, in these slivers of moments where it's like, today I'm working on this character in this episode. And uh, it's not until, you know, somebody brings it up that it's like, Oh, that's a lot to process. That's probably why I don't, you know? <laughs> so yeah, overwhelming is probably my answer. 
Overwhelming. I, I would agree with that. I, I, I don't ever think of it that way. The same as Eric, like, oh, okay, I have some recording to do this week and it's these hours and it's this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, as we meet other actors in the biz that work on different things, we're like, wait, you've been working on the same show for over 20 years? And, and you know, <laughs> the on-camera people like, that's a great gig. <laughs> My gig was three years long and it's over now. Um, so it's just, yeah, I, we, I don't think about it as being uh, as unique as it is until I'm presented with such a reminder that it is a really unique uh, and very limited number of things that have that longevity. For people who haven't joined the crew yet of the Straw Hat Pirates, maybe because they're younger or because it's very daunting, why should they join the crew now? I, I, I've, I will say I've met a lot of people over time, um, especially like at a convention where you'll have somebody who comes up to meet you and they have a significant other or a child or a friend who's like, like this person is like, I'm a huge fan of One Piece and, and Sanji. And the other person's like, it's too intimidating and too big to dive into. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's the fun of it. Like anything that you do when you get super involved in, in, a, in a narrative, it, it becomes more entertaining the more details you have. And the more details you have of the story, the more conversations you can have with the people who like the stuff with you. So I think there's a camaraderie that can be built if you just watch one episode, just watch one, you know, you'll get it. Like a lot of other long running franchises that are out there, they just seem so huge. Like this thing's been around for years. I, you know, I, I see that there's so much fandom out there. I don't know if I want to dedicate that much of my life into finding this out. Um, but there's always some sort of starting point or some sort of jumping in point that if, if you already as a fan, if you have someone who's curious about it, you can like, just start here. Like what Eric was saying, like start in this little arc or watch this little thing and see if that appeals to you. And if it does, then watch this other thing. And if, you know, if you two or three things appeal to you, then head over to the beginning because it's worth it. You know, it, just watch the whole thing. Just yeah. do it in your own time. It's like having a, pre it's like having a built-in prequel, like start at the beginning of season three, like I did. You know, yeah. and then it's like, whoa, I've got all this other stuff that I can watch that tells the backstory, which is really the story story. For your upcoming performances and leading up to the thousandth episode, what do you hope that viewers will get out of your performances? The Seiyu does such a wonderful job. Uh, I, I hope that I can continue to help tell the story in English, you know, based off of what the, the animation team has done and the Seiyu's performance and the uh, what Oda's doing with the story, I, I hope that I can do my part to the best of my ability to help that storytelling continue. Um, I love to approach things from, especially with this type of work from the uh, standpoint of, I would love for fans all over the world to be able to get together through some sort of interpretation service and talk about the same moments and talk about the show. And you know when this happened and that happened and they said this and have that all be the same type of joy. And they can continue having a conversation about that where the language itself isn't a barrier that everyone can just you know, share in their love for the experience and the storytelling. I think that it's, I want to be able to deliver a performance that makes the people who are excited for it pleased. That they, they know that like, they're looking forward to sp very specific things. You know, either they, they, they know the story, they've maybe read what's going to happen and they're looking for something pretty specific and I hope I'm able to deliver.